I'm a Hellenistic Jew or Judite, meaning I was born and raised outside the country, outside the region of Judea. But like any devout believer in the God of Israel, I am faithful to return to Jerusalem in Judea for the Passover celebration every year. The Passover celebration is the most important religious celebration of the year for all those who follow the Lord of all the earth. But this Passover, it's been different. There's been some excitement and some uncertainty because a man, and some say he was more than a man, is crucified outside the city of Jerusalem right before Passover. Now, crucifixions in the Roman Empire are very common, but resurrections from the dead are not, and there are rumors and there are whispers. This man, some claim to be more than a man, yet lives. That he rose from the dead, confirming his declaration to be the Messiah, the long-awaited Savior of Israel. And I don't know what to believe, but I must say it seems unlikely that a dead man came back to life. But that's before this happens. This year I stay in the city of Jerusalem 40 more days so I can celebrate the day of Pentecost there. And I, and along with many others, on the day of Pentecost, we hear a sound, a sound like none of us have ever heard before. It's sort of like a violent rushing wind, but maybe more like a spirit moving through the city. And I find out later that's exactly what happened. The Holy Spirit descends on the 12 apostles of Jesus who are filled with power from above and they all come rushing out of the house they were in and all 12 of them are declaring that this man, Jesus, the one who was crucified, he's alive and he's our Lord and Savior. He's the Messiah of Israel. There are many other Hellenistic Jews and God-fearing peoples in the city on this day for the celebration of Pentecost and we all speak many different languages, and we're amazed because all the apostles are Galileans, yet we're hearing them speak in our own languages. Acts chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them in our own languages speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And many like me, we're just trying to sort all this out, but others start mocking the apostles and say, hey, they're drunk. Until uh, out of this chaos, one apostle, I find out later it's the apostle Peter, raises his voice declaring boldly, we are not drunk. And then as the other apostles gather around and stand with him, Peter speaks to us of prophecies being fulfilled, and all of those prophecies pointing to this man, Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, and verse 36. Men of Israel, listen to what I have to say about Jesus from Nazareth. God proved he sent Jesus to you by having him work miracles, wonders, and signs. All of you know this. God had already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you took him and had evil men put him to death on a cross. But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death could not hold him in its power. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And many of us are deeply convicted and we have faith and we repent and we're baptized into Jesus on that very day. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all, including myself. And I'm so thankful for the boldness of the apostle Peter to share his faith in Jesus. And Peter and the apostles don't stop there in Jerusalem because of their uh, willingness to boldly share the word of God, the church continues to thrive not only in Jerusalem, but then throughout the rest of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. The Apostle Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, imitate me then just as I imitate Christ. And Paul has the same quality of boldness, and he spreads the gospel even further out into the known world. 
But we see this boldness in Peter. We see this boldness in Paul, where neither one of them shrinks back from sharing the story of Jesus. Now, people have many different concepts about what it means to be bold. Hey, I wore this bright red suit or this bright purple suit to work today. That's really bold, right? Or I wore a tie and suit to school today, which is kind of bold in our culture. A lot of people wear, uh, a lot of the kids seem to wear pajamas to school. Or I went skinny dipping in the lake. I asked the most popular girl out on a date. I challenged Pastor Kevin to a dance contest. <laughs> I ate a Pepper X, the hottest pepper in the world right now. Well, I admit it. I'm a Ducks, or I'm a Beavers, or I'm a Cowboys, or I'm a Colts fan. So there's all sorts of things that people uh, feel like they're being bold about or claim to be bold about. So I want to make very clear to you what I'm talking about, what I'm encouraging you to build up in your life when I want you to strengthen and qual uh, this quality of boldness in your life. What I'm sharing with you today is how you can be bold or bolder about sharing the most important thing to be bold about, your faith in Jesus if you're a believer. And sometimes it's one of the most intimidating things to be bold about, right? Your faith. It can be the scariest thing to be bold about. Even for Peter and Paul. Peter prays for boldness. Paul prays for boldness. These great men of faith pray for boldness. Peter, after being threatened with death by the Jewish Sanhedrin, the same uh, folks who secured the death of Jesus, prays this in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your slaves, that would be Peter and the other 11 apostles, may speak your message with complete boldness. Paul, while under house arrest for preaching boldly about Jesus, asked for the Christians in Ephesus to pray for him. Ephesians 6, 19 and 20. Also pray that God will give me the right words to say. Then I will speak boldly when I reveal the mystery of the good news. Because I have already been doing this as Christ's representative, I am in prison. So pray that I speak about this good news as boldly as I have to. Boldness is a character quality that every man and woman of God needs to cultivate in their lives because Paul tells us to imitate him just as he imitates Jesus. And Paul was bold, and Jesus is bold. You know, He doesn't hold back from speaking the truth of who he is and what he requires of us. He's the son of God, God in the flesh, come to save us from our uh, sins. And, you know, foolishness to those who don't believe, but the very power of God for those of us who do believe. And it's this power of God that we need in our lives to develop the positive Jesus qualities that the Apostle Paul had, such as surrender, such as grit, such as joy, and if you missed any of those messages, you can catch them online at hollychurch.org uh, slash messages. And the character quality we're looking at today, Paul had. He imitated this character quality from Jesus. Boldness, the determination to live my faith. Being bold isn't about being overbearing or about being pushy or being an extrovert or doing something over the top to prove how bold you are. Being bold is about living your life of faith with purpose. And this message today is super practical. These are things you can do immediately to strengthen the quality, the character trait of boldness in your life. I develop godly boldness by publicly sharing with others that I follow Jesus, that I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to be representing Jesus like it trick-or-treat street with my church family. I'm not ashamed to let people know, hey, my church is Holly Church. I'm not ashamed to let people know that on weekends I go to church, whether it's in person or online. Uh, you can publicly share your faith uh, with others by wearing your Holly Christian Church t-shirts. And if someone asks you about it, then you can tell them about your church. Oh, that's my church. It's an awesome church. You ought to uh, check it out. You know, by simply wearing your Holly Church t-shirt, it may open up a door for a person to open their heart and mind to Jesus. You can use your Holly Church pen. If you, you should have some of those. Here's mine. 
you know, you use it out if you ever have to write something and just make sure, hey, look at that, <laughs> use that pen. You read your Bible at school or at work. You represent Jesus well on social media. The Apostle Paul words it this way in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Be wise in the way you act toward those who are outside the Christian faith. Make the most of your opportunities. See, God will give you opportunities to share your faith with those who are not believers in Jesus. So you need to cultivate boldness in your life so you don't miss those opportunities to share your faith. I develop godly boldness by publicly sharing with others that I follow Jesus, by praying for others when they share their struggles with me. People in your life, people who don't obey Jesus, people who don't follow Jesus, if they find out you're a Jesus follower, uh, they will often share their struggles with you, their difficulties with you. And when they do so, simply ask them, hey, is it okay if I pray for you? Yeah. I've never had anybody tell me no to that. And if it's appropriate, if it's a good time and place, just say, hey, can I pray for you right now? And if they say yes, pray for them right now. If, if it's not an appropriate time and place and you can't pray for them right now, make sure you do keep your word and actually pray for them. And do the same thing for your fellow Christians if they express a need to you. Again, this message is super practical because... I want to give you ways that you can immediately uh, use to develop and cultivate more boldness in your life. Uh, publicly share with others that you're a believer in Jesus. Pray for those who share a struggle or concern with you. And I develop boldness by living my faith both publicly and privately. Your faith in Jesus, as both the Apostle Peter and Paul show us, it's meant to be lived out publicly and privately. Publicly, you know, treat others how you would like to be treated, including on social media or at sporting events when you don't agree with the ref's call. Uh, volunteer, you know, serve others at church. God instructs you to do this, to serve with fellow believers. And volunteer, serve others who are not part of the church, like at Trick or Treat Street or our Oh Holly Light celebration coming up in December, which God also instructs you to do. Serve with fellow believers. Serve those outside the church alongside your fellow believers. See, I'm sharing with you how to live your faith publicly. Don't steal. Be honest. You know, when you mess up, take responsibility. People will forgive you. You know, when we mess up, what your sinful nature does is and Christians are just as guilty as this as non-Christians, your sinful nature tells you don't fess up. You know, try to hide it or try to blame it on someone else or something else. Come on. You likely do this all the time. Just admit it. I, I struggle with it my, myself. I'll admit it. The, uh, you know, you probably struggle with it as well, attempting to blame others or something else for your mistakes. Well, how about trying something new? You know, in Christ Jesus, if you're in Christ Jesus, you're a new creation. How about actually trying this? Try actually living your faith and just say, you know, that was entirely my fault. I messed up. I'm sorry. I forgot. Try that instead of blaming someone else or, else or blaming your circumstances, and you'll be living your faith publicly. You know, be kind. Don't cost it gossip. Don't gossip or tear others down behind their backs. Be different in a good way, you know, a Jesus way. But you can't forget about living your faith privately as well, because that's what gives you the strength to live your faith publicly. Pray daily. Read God's Word, the Bible daily. Engage with your connect group. Engage in a weekly worship service Live your faith both publicly and privately. Prove you are a Christian both by your words and by your actions. I develop and nurture boldness by inviting friends and family to church. One of the most practical ways to develop this quality of boldness is just to simply invite friends and family to attend a worship service here in person or online if they 
live far away or if they're more comfortable uh, watching online uh, first, especially before coming to an in-person service. And with Thanksgiving and the Christmas season coming up, that's a great time of year to invite folks to church. And uh, speaking of the holiday season, I want to pause and I just want to encourage you to be praying for our special annual Christmas season offering. So during the weeks of this special offering, and it takes place during the holiday season, as a church family, we all participate because everyone can give something. We all participate in giving more than we usually do to bless others, such as our missionaries, Ryan and Heather Baker and their kids in uh, the country of Bolivia. And we also give to fund special projects. Now, this past summer, the core team of those serving at Camp Attitude, they worshiped uh, with us here at Holly, and it was our privilege to have them here with us at our in-person services. And Camp Attitude is a camp that's dedicated to serving atypical kids and their families and just blessing those families. They do an awesome job blessing them in the name of Jesus. And we want to bless Camp Attitude this year as a church family with part of our special Christmas offering. Just be watching your mail for details on how we're going to bless them. And let's pray together right now for our Christmas offering. Heavenly Father, as we approach the season when we celebrate your generous gift to us and to the entire world, Jesus, just stir within our hearts, stir within our minds a spirit of generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, look for opportunities to invite friends and family to church. I develop boldness by publicly sharing with others, hey, I follow Jesus, by praying for others, both believers and non-believers when they share a struggle with me or they share a need with me, by living my faith both publicly and privately, by inviting friends and family to church, and by praying for those I know who don't follow Jesus. I have a list of people that I pray for. I would encourage you to make a list. Write down their names. And right now, just... Think of those, and maybe even take a moment to start writing some names down, but just think of those that you love, that you care about, who they're just, they're not right with Jesus right now. And go ahead and close your eyes and just get them in your mind as I lead us in prayer for them. Heavenly Father, you know the name of each person that we love, that we care about, who isn't being obedient to you right now. And in faith, we ask for your spirit to be at work in their lives, drawing them to you. And give us opportunities to share our faith with them. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a privilege God gives you to be a part, uh, to partner with him in drawing people to faith in his son, Jesus Christ. It's a privilege. Imitate Paul, who says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. I develop boldness by praying for those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and by sharing my faith story. You don't have to have a degree or a pedigree to share your faith story. It's your story, how you came to faith in Christ. You don't have to know every uh, Bible question that somebody might ask you. You just have to be willing to share your faith story. The Apostle Peter instructs us to always be ready to share our faith story in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 16. Finally, all of you should agree and have concern and love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insult you. Instead, treat everyone with kindness. You are God's chosen ones, and he will bless you. The scriptures say, do you really love life? Do you want to be happy? Then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road to peace. The Lord watches over everyone who obeys him, and he listens to their prayers but he opposes everyone who does evil. 
Can anyone really harm you for being eager to do good deeds? Even if you have to suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid. Live boldly. And don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. This way, you will make people ashamed for saying bad things about your good conduct as a follower of Christ. So Peter, he lives his faith with boldness. And Paul lives his faith with boldness. And we're to imitate them. Let's pray for boldness. Let's pray for opportunities to share our faith. Go ahead and bow your heads. Lord, strengthen this quality of boldness in our lives. Empower us to live our faith in you, Jesus, both privately and publicly. Bring people into our lives we can influence for you. And Lord, we don't always get it right, so forgive us when we mess up. We ask these things in the power and the strength of Jesus' name. Amen.